Hello everybody, good people of the world. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kristana. If you are new here, hit the subscribe button. If you're not new here, welcome back friends and family. I know I've been a little off the last couple of weeks, maybe the last month or so because I've been traveling for work, but I am done traveling and hopefully we can get back to, you know, more often videos. But today I'm gonna do something that you guys are probably gonna think I have just completely lost it and it is, I am going to be using a bunch of household things to see what kind of finish we can get on here. So my idea is, and we may not use all of these, so just, you know, I actually have not done this before. I've used kosher salt before, and I've used these randomly on different things, but I have never used them all together. So this could be really awesome or really bad. I wanted to do this because I know that there are people all over the world that can't always get the actual specific name brand products that I use. So I figure most people can get this stuff in the store if you don't have you know those brands. So this is just baking soda. This right here is just a wax bar, so you could really probably just use a candle, something that's unscented. This is kosher salt, which is a coarser salt. This is cinnamon, and this is cocoa powder. Now, the only thing that I probably will use that is not something that I can mix right now is maybe a very fine textured finish. This is from Purico, but it's just a very fine textured finish, but you could probably use like a plaster of Paris or um, like a dry powder of some sort. I was, I asked my husband to get me baking powder, but they didn't have any at the store um, just because they're out of a lot of stuff. We're military and we don't have a lot of stuff in. So most of your stores will have baking powder. So I'm thinking baking powder was what I was going to try to use with this, but I'm gonna use a texture additive. And this is very, like I said, it's very thin. So you can see it, it's on my fingers. It's like a powdery finish. So I'm not saying baking powder would absolutely work, but this was what I was thinking. Baking powder, maybe like a, a ceramic powder that you'd use, people use ceramics. Anyways, I'm just rambling now at this point. But I'm going to do a weathered finish on here and I just wanted to see what will happen. I hope you guys are ready for this ride because I really don't know what is going to happen. Stay here. All right, everybody, if you have watched me before, you know the drill. I'm going to remove all of the hardware and I'm gonna clean this piece. If you are new here, we're gonna remove all the hardware. I like to clean my pieces first. This is going to have a textured finish, but it's not shiny, so we don't need to sand it. If it was shiny, I would have probably scuff sanded it, but we're going to have this textured finish and I do want some of this. I'm gonna chip it off. So this, for this finish, I am not going to sand this piece. I'm going to just remove this, clean it really well, and then we are going to get started. Okay, everybody, so let me preface this with, I have never mixed these three together. It could be, I don't know when you guys were growing up, if you ever mixed you know, vinegar and baking soda, which we're not doing vinegar right now. If you ever mixed vinegar and baking soda in those science projects where the volcano like explodes or whatever, so, <laughs> That's not gonna happen because we're not doing vinegar. But I'm gonna do some baking soda, okay? I'm going to mix some kosher salt and I'm going to mix our fine texture powder, which earlier I had said, so the fine texture powder, earlier I had said baking powder, but I don't think that that would work because it would just dissolve into this. So what I would do if you don't have texture stuff is I would get like um, a, like plaster of Paris or something like that, that you know is going to harden. Cause that's technically what we want. We want our texture medium to harden. And I think what this is gonna do is possibly create some craters and bubbles. And then this is going to create some more, uh, not as fine, some more coarse texture. In my head, this is what's going to happen. I don't know what's actually going to happen. So we're just gonna experiment and see. Wish me luck. <laughs> Wish me luck. I want the base coat of this to be dark, and so I'm gonna use Metropolis by Daydream Apothecary, which is a super dark gray. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour that into a mixing cup, and I'm going to cover the entire piece with this. So I filled it quite a bit, and then I'm going to add the kosher salt in there. 
I'm going to put the texture additive, and I'm gonna put baking soda. I know you guys are gonna ask me for measurements, but I didn't do measurements. I just kind of went by the way that the texture additive felt. And so I want this to have enough moisture in it that I'm able to brush it on and create peaks, but I also want it thick enough to where it's not pouring off of my paintbrush. So you're gonna see at the end, it's gonna be a perfect mixture, kind of like a pancake batter-like consistency. The next thing I'm gonna do is take a cheap chip brush and I am going to stipple it on this piece. So you can either stipple it like I'm doing right now or you can brush it on and then stipple it, which I'm going to show you here in a second what I mean, but this is going to be on the entire piece. Right here you can see when I brush it on how there is texture already in this. So if you like that, you could just brush it on and leave it like that, but I'm gonna create peaks by doing a stippling motion with that paintbrush. And then again, this is going to be on the entire piece of furniture. The top is in really good condition, and I know that some people are like, why would you keep the top perfect if the bottom's gonna be an aged look? But I just really liked the wood grain on the top. I don't have a reason for it. So I'll clean that lip underneath, and I'm gonna leave the top just as it is. You wanna allow this piece to completely dry before you go on to this step. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add all three of those ingredients into a dry formula. So we're gonna add the kosher salt, the texture additive, and the baking soda into a mixing cup. And we're going to mix those together and sprinkle them on the piece. So you can lay the piece on its back or on its side so that it's easier to get that dry powder mix on there. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take white vinegar. And what this white vinegar is going to do is it's going to add moisture to this dry texture so that it sticks to my piece but it is also going to react to the baking soda and the salt that is in the painted layer and on this dry layer, and it's going to bubble up and create craters. So it's just gonna give us another added layer of dimension, something that looks a little bit different, looks kind of crusty and bubbled. And you'll see that in the next clip where it's dried before we go over it with the next layer of paint. So you can see right here when I spray it, it is going to make that dry mixture wet and it's going to stick to the paint. And then it also we're gonna get a little bit closer and I'll show you where it's gonna bubble up and just create some extra texture and a little bit more of a unique look. Now, you're gonna allow this to completely dry and once it's dry, you're gonna take whatever color you want next. So I'm gonna use Living Light, which is my brand new color by Daydream Apothecary. And I'm going to pour that into a bowl because you are gonna have some cross contamination with the mixtures, the, the texture, and your texture's probably gonna fall off a little bit when you do this. So make sure you pour it into a separate container so that you don't get it into your paint container. But I am using Living Light and I'm just doing a thin layer of this. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of moisture to push it out. But this is going to be the next step is putting your base coat of whatever color it is down that you wanna use. Now you might be asking me, why did I put the dark one down and why did I put the texture down and then why did I put the dry texture and why am I putting this green down? 
So it'll all make sense later on when we start distressing back and it starts pulling colors back and you can see the dark underneath and you can see the green underneath. But this is a process and these are layers. And so you have to be patient when you're wanting to do this kind of textured look. So again, we're going to put our dry texture on this piece. We're going to spray it with the vinegar and we're gonna allow it to completely dry before we add the next layer of colors. The next colors we'll use will be Soul Full of Sunshine, which is a neon by Daydream Apothecary, Mom's Night Out, which is one of the neons, and Maverick, which is one of the newer colors in my line. They are all Daydream Apothecary colors. So this piece is completely dry, and what I'm doing is I'm just kind of lightly going over it with the Soul Full of Sunshine, and you're going to see that I'm going to just layer and overlap these paint colors over one another. So that's Soul Full of Sunshine. Now I'm gonna do Mom's Night Out and I'm just gonna layer over top of it. Then I'm gonna lay over, lay, layer over top of that some So Full of Sunshine. I'm gonna take some Maverick over to the left of Mom's Night Out. And so this is how I'm going to layer and kind of dry brush and add even more color and dimension to this piece. These next few steps are kind of fun. So we're gonna take mom's night out and I'm going to stipple it in little areas. And once I've stippled it on that corner, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my white vinegar in my little spray bottle and I am going to spray it on top of that. And you're going to see it kind of bubble up and show some white and that is the baking soda and the salt reacting with the vinegar underneath that mom's night out and i'm going to take a rag you could take a paper towel i'm just taking a microfiber cloth and i'm going to dab it so that way i can kind of pull some of those layers up and add a layered worn look are you guys ready for it so we're gonna push that rag on there, pull it up, and you can see the metropolis underneath it. You're gonna start being able to see living light, which living light you can see also because we're just dry brushing and layering those other colors. But you can see metropolis and you can see how it's kind of pulling those layers up and adding a more authentic worn look, but adding color to it. So I'm going to repeat this process on the entire piece. Now I am gonna show you some areas where instead of using the microfiber cloth, I spray the vinegar on it, I take a paper towel and I rub it on there and then I pull it back and it's gonna pull layers of that back. So you could do this with a microfiber cloth or you can do this with a paper towel. Either one is going to work, but this is the next step on this entire piece I'm going to do this.
Once I have done this on the entire piece, I am going to create a wash with the color Aura. I really wanted to add some purple to this, and so this is a really true magenta color. This is one of the newer colors in my line, and so I'm going to add a little bit to a paper bowl, and then I'm gonna add some water to water it down, and this will give us a really watery mix, and then what I'm going to do is I am going to put this wash on the entire piece and just dab it back with the paper towel or microfiber cloth, and then I'm also going to use it vinegar in some areas. So I'm gonna show you that here after we're done mixing. Okay, so I am going to brush this on the entire piece and I'm gonna work in sections and I'm going to just wipe it back or dab it back with a paper towel and just so that, or blot it back. So dab it, blot it, wipe it back, whatever you want. Usually blotting it works much better. And so I'm gonna blot it back with the paper towel. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the vinegar and I'm going to spray it with the vinegar, let it sit for a second, and then I'm gonna take the paper towel and I'm going to dab it again. And that's gonna pull even more of those layers off. And that's where if you pay attention to the upper right-hand corner, we're going to be able to pull Pull it back and you're going to see some more of that metropolis coming through. I will do this process on the entire piece and then you need to allow it to completely dry. So let it sit overnight. You can see that I allowed some of that aura to drip down too. And then I'm going to take a metal scraper and I am going to just put it flat against the piece and scrape all the extra texture off. And what it's gonna do is gonna scrape, scrape it, it's gonna create some chippy looks, it's gonna pull back to that metropolis and it's just gonna add a really good worn look. Once I'm done with that, I am going to take a 120 grit sandpaper and I am also going to sand this piece. All right, things are about to get a little wild. I'm going to take cocoa powder and I'm going to take an oil-based clear wax and I am going to mix them together. I wanted to use the cocoa powder to create a dark wax. There are some people who have asked me if I am concerned about insects and mold and things like that, and I'm not. I'll keep you guys updated, but I highly doubt we're gonna have any mold issues because I'm mixing this with an oil-based wax. And then I also go over it with the clear wax. And so I don't think we're gonna have issues, but again, I'll keep you guys updated because I have never done this before. I will tell you that, you know, hundreds of years ago, people used pigments with different plants, different whatever it was that they could get in you know, their garden or things like that. They used to use turmeric for a yellow. And so this is kind of the idea that I had here was trying to use things that I could in my kitchen. So I'm not using chocolate syrup, it's just cocoa powder, which is not, it, it's 
I mean, I guess it could cause issues, but I don't think it will. So I applied it all around the corners and the edges so that I could darken that. And then I'm wiping it back. And then I'm going to add the clear wax in the center and just kind of go over everything and make sure that this piece is completely sealed because you do need to seal this paint. Next, I am going to create some rust on my handles. I'm gonna spray just a little bit of water on there. I know we went over it with wax, but this will allow that to stick. And so I'm going to just dab a little of that cocoa powder on there. And then I'm also gonna use cinnamon. So there are two different kinds of brown shades and a lot of people over the years have used cinnamon for rust. So it creates a little bit lighter rust than your cocoa powder. And what I'm gonna do is spray this with my vinegar again, cause it's gonna allow it to drip down and it kind of bubbles up a little bit to create a crusty look. And then I'm gonna go over it again with my powders to add a little bit more of a dimension and layer. And then once it's completely dried, I am going to use a spray sealer, like a shellac over it because that's an oil-based and it's going to just lock this in. Okay, everybody, this piece is done. This video is done. I'm gonna back away so you can see it, but there it is. I am also going to put some staged photos on here, but I will put a list of everything I use below so that way you guys know exactly what I use. I have had a couple questions about if I'm worried about mold. I'm not, these are dry ingredients, they're all sealed in. I highly doubt we're gonna have mold issues, but I'll keep an eye on it and let you guys know later on. And again, sealed, feeling good, looking good. Everything is just, I don't know. I just like it. I like the way it looks. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you have an amazing week. And until next time, happy creating and I will see you guys later. Bye. Hey darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey darling, we could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open Countryside is so pretty